Hey there viewers, it's Charlie I'm back again with another Transformers review. And today's review is going to be on Studio Series Jazz. Now, of course, this is Jazz's appearance in the first film. And well, the only film that this version of Jazz appears in. But well, of course. This is one of the uh, earlier Studio Series releases, because this is Studio Series number 10. So, uh, yeah. So, looking at the box. Of course, we got Jazz right there. Of course, he's number 10 in Studio Series. It's from the first film. Autobot Jazz. It says thirty pounds right there, so I'm guessing that this was being sold at a second-hand shop or something. Yeah, we've got Jazz right there, just saying, "What's cocky little bitches?" <laughs> Here we got a close up of his face. Here we got Jazz with his crescent cannon, although it's a bit cut off. And of course, with the the Ultimate Insignia, it's right there. That's on every backdrop. The back of them in both modes, because of course that's a Pontiac Solstice. Mission City Battle, which a lot of figures come with for the backdrop. See here. And the back, we've got some more figures. We've got Lockdown, which would be a pretty cool one to get. Bumblebee, which I hear is pretty shit. And Stinger, which I do kind of want to get one day. Although, in next year, we're supposed to be getting the uh, concept art version of Stinger called Widowmaker. So, that's pretty cool. And for the backdrop, so if I can just. And my phone's not just broke. So, getting the uh, backdrop out. Well, of course, it's this one that we've seen time and time again, where it's part of the city just getting blown up. So I guess we could use this to represent when Megatron flies onto one of the buildings and rips him in two. I don't know. Frankly, the toy doesn't do that, but the masterpiece figure can. <laughs> but we can just put Jazz right there if you want. So, uh, yeah. I will come back to that at the end of the video. I will, looking at the figure, well, it's pretty much Jazz's vehicle mode, but, well, other viewers have uh, said this before, this is small. Like, let's just bring in a figure I'm going to use later for comparisons. Here's the uh, original Jazz toy. That, yeah, you can tell that Studio Series is goes to scale instead of like the actual uh <laughs> and of course like nowadays we're used to this because we have figures like Studio Series 86 Hot Rod, we've got Studio Series 86 Ironhide. But back in 2018 people were surprised with this. So um yeah. Now me personally I don't really give a rat's arse because as I just stated, it's 2024 now, we've got figures doing this nowadays. But, of course, back in 2018, people were concerned about this. But, yeah, this was just a scale. So... And, honestly, the figure itself still looks quite good. I mean, we've got silver paints. And if I just bring in the original figure again... This was just grey plastic, so... I'll consider that's an upgrade. I mean, should be got some panel lines, but eh. So looking at the details, of course, we've got the headlights right here, we've got the uh, front bumper, which... Something quite fun that you can do is this can actually spin around. And of course, that's for the transformation. But we've got the windshield right here, which 
pretty much just has some of the, yeah, the robot mode in there. We've got the side doors right there, we've got the wheels. Got the back with the spoiler, got the tail lights right there. Underneath, you can pretty much see a crumpled up robot. Because the way that, that this guy transforms is actually quite interesting, because we just have his head right there. So, yeah. <laughs> So if I just bring in his accessory, that being his crescent cannon, and we can see that it's sculpted pretty uh, nicely, and we've got this bit that folds out for ro uh, robot mode, but for vehicle mode it's meant to be like this, because what this can do is just slot onto the spoiler, and I guess that can shoot it up, uh, Starscream I guess. Or if they need Jet Decepticons. Okay. Or it's meant to be like a little satellite dish. Again, okay. Sure. But yeah, it's not really a solid connection. It's not a 5mm connection, it's just connected on by the spoiler. But hey, at least he actually has his um, movie accurate gun. Compare that to the original toy where it just had this weird extending harpoon gun. Which, fun fact, I actually didn't have this for the longest time. This actually came with my co copy of this. So, the seller just threw in the uh, original uh, version of, of this uh, gun, although... Well, I'm pretty sure that this is the Dark of the Moon version of this god, but still, at least I can sort of call this guy com complete now. But yeah, like, this guy just had a little harpoon gun for some reason. I mean, they're better than spoons, I guess, but still, give me the Crescent Cannon any day. And I guess, oh, oh well... We're at it. Let's just compare the two uh, jazzes. And again, quite a size difference, but this was 2007, this was 2018. So, uh, yeah. And again, we can see that this is just grey plastic. This is silver painted. So, yeah. You kind of miss the, uh, oops. I do kind of miss the, uh, silver rims here. But, yeah. I think that the kibbles actually managed a bit, um, like, of course, like, this is obviously the feet. But here, this is just the back of the car. So that's managed a bit more neatly, in my opinion. Of course, here the hood is split up because, well, that's the arm panels. Whereas here, it's not. I mean, there are still panels, but eh. So honestly, I'm sort of leaning more towards uh, this guy. Now, for shits and giggles, let's throw in the other Studio Series Jazz. And this is obviously going to make all the G1s wine, but... Here we have the, the two jazz together. <laughs> I can see that even SS86 jazz is bigger, but I, I guess this is a bigger car, so it makes sense. This is for scale, obviously. But these two actually look quite good together. Now, all we need now is a Gamer Edition Jazz to complete the trio, so, yeah. Now, that's pretty much it for the vehicle mode, so, let's move on to the transformation. So, to get this guy transformed, well, 
it's honestly quite easy. So it's gonna start by getting the back wheels untabbed and all this just comes out. You can also get the arms and tabs. Just move them out. So again, get the back wheels untabbed and untab the arms. So now that we have the back wheels out and the and the arms out as well, we can just spin around the front of the car like so. Just unpeg the uh, waist section from this uh, peg in here. Just move all that down, and that's just going to plug into here where the bonnet used to be. Move these sections off, and those become the shin pads. Get the heels down so he can actually stand up. Put the shoulders down. Come in here and just get the head out. Then with the backpack, we spin around the spoiler and just push all the uh, we push the the hood and the windshield to the to the back, and that's it. Then just get the hands and spin them around. And finally, take the front section here, spin that 180 degrees, and here we have Jazz in robot mode. Well, after I, I get him fully standing, because pretty sure the legs have gotten a little bit loose over the years, because I'm pretty sure these are ball joints. Once I get him standing, here we have Jazz in robot mode. And compared to Blackout, who was my previous review, that is a breath of fresh air when it comes to the, the, the transformation. Like, seriously, that is much more simple. Like, I can actually... Uh, I can remember where the stuff is supposed to go. I can actually do it easily. Like, the only really hard part is going back into car mode, it's like... Trying to remember to plug the waist back into the peg on the the hood section or, or the roof the roof section like that's the only tricky part. And even then, now bales in comparison to blackouts or gummy transformation. So this is definitely much more simple. And if anything, I would say that this is a bit easier than eighty six chances transform transformation because. It doesn't feel as brittle, because remember, th this figure, they were reported as cracking. I've not heard reports of this figure, like, breaking, so... But, anyway, transformation gushing aside, how is this figure in robot mode? Well, he actually does look quite nice. I can definitely hear him saying stuff like... Let's crack a little bitches. <laughs> Sorry, I just love that line. I'm just having a 360. I mean, yeah, he's got most of the car in the back, but... To be fair, so did the original figure. And they're looking at the head. Of course, that's Jazz's head, and I'm pretty sure that's light piping. I'm not actually sure. It might be light pipes. Yeah, I don't think so. But, oh well, that's still a really nice looking head sculpt. Now, you may have noticed that he's got one normal hand, so you can put like 5mm to weapons in. And one hand that he can use to have spaghetti with, because that's just a fork. And the reason for that is, well, if we bring in the Crescent Cannon, well, we have to flip this out first. 
I mean, yeah, he does have this port if you want him to hold it normally. Like a normal figure to can, but... Well, you can also hold it a different way. So if we just flip up the hands, you can see this port here, can just plug into here. Because, of course, a lot of weapons in the Bay films just transformed from the hand, or in Prime's case, from the from the uh, forearm. So this is meant to replicate that. And in fact, like, the original figure also did that with the harpoon gun. Where you just uh, plug this into here. So, uh, yeah, and uh, we'll get to the scale thing later. But, for now, like, this, this looks really nice. And of course, if you want... Uh, if you want a different figure holding this, then, well, you got the Osher with this peg, so, yeah, it's not exclusive to Jazz, and he still has a, a normal hand if you want him to hold, like, 86 Jazz's gun or something. So, uh, yeah, it's a pretty neat thing that... So that's a pretty cool thing. Now, let's move on to how he, he looks with his, uh, I, I guess, father. And, um... Oh, dear. Yeah, they... These are both deluxe. But, as I said at the, at the beginning, Studio Series is about scale, and... We, we've had worse cases uh, now. Remember the uh, vo Voyages that are being sold at deluxe size? Hot Rod and Ironhide? Hell, look at freaking... Uh, 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 look at some of the leader class figures. Like, not Blackouts, but the uh, Voyager Plus figures. Like, people are going... Like, people went mad when Astro Team was shown. And that's a really good figure. And hell, people are now mad with the uh, Studio Series Springer, and yeah, that's pretty much just a new, it's just an upgraded Siege, but I still I think that looks, uh, like, I still think that that, 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 that that looks cool, so. And what I'm trying to say is, just because it's uh, smaller than they used to be, it's still a really good figure, okay? This is not a case of shrinkflation. It's a case of scale. In fact, if I bring in 86 Jazz, I mean, yeah, he's a little bit taller, but... Eh. In fact, I actually forgot to uh, put these down. So yeah, for all the G1ers out there, here are the two, the two jazzes together. <laughs> and honestly, I actually do quite like how these look together. And if anything, jazz is one of the more accurate, um, well, to, to the source material because they both have the car, uh, well, they both have the chassis at the front of the car. They both have the back of the car as, as part of the legs. They both have the uh, hood the car is their uh, backpack, and they both have the visor, so, yeah, Jazz got off lucky when it came to being a Bayverse character, compared with, like, Ironhide, and, I mean, Bayverse Ironhide is a really awesome character, but, of course, it's Ironhide in name only. Hell, I've got a friend who just hates Bayverse Ironhide just because, oh, it's not G1, so, yeah, there are still G1ers out there, but trust me, the Bay, like, I, I freaking love the uh, first movie designs, and this is definitely one of them, like, I had a movie Jazz as, one, as my first ever Transformer, like, it was the Cyber Slammers figure, although I don't have it now, so, uh, yeah, but, 
Okay, I, I am definitely rambling now, so let's move on to the, the figure's articulation. So, head. I'm pretty sure it's on a ball joint. Yes, it is. So he can look up. He can sort of look down. He can go, go side to side. The arms can move. Of course, he can T-pose. can sort of go outwards like this. So I guess a backwards butterfly joint. The elbows are on a ball joint. So of course, it can swivel. Hands can start go downwards, so if you have them holding a sword, then, well, there you go. Nothing at the waist, although, I mean, at least he's not going to get swin half of the waist. <laughs> Megatron. <laughs> that damn scene. <laughs> well, he can kick forward. Carl kick back, because the backpack's in the way. He can do the splits. And he's got a pivot up to there. He's got a swivel there. And he's got knees. So, yeah. Quite posable, but of course, Studio Series has pretty much modernized articulation now. So, waist swivels and uh, ankle pivots are, are pretty much just standard nowadays. So, if this guy was released nowadays in Studio Series, he probably would actually have that. Hell, if this guy was released nowadays in Studio Series, he would probably have a gimmick where he can split in half. Seeing how um, um, Ultra Magnus can come apart, just to replicate that one scene. So I wouldn't be surprised if they uh, 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 like if they did this guy now. There like, probably there would probably be a lot they can undo that this guy split in two. I don't know, but for this figure. I mean, I think it's fine as it is. And if we just bring in the backdrop, I mean, as overused as it is, I think he actually looks pretty cool with it. If he doesn't fall forward. Here we go. So, yeah. Now, my complaints with the figure. Well, I find that the little spinning chest thing... And the, uh, the spinning chest thing is actually a bit loose. Might be due to age, I don't know, but on my copy it's a little bit annoying, especially when trying to display him in a uh, vehicle mode. Especially with, well, also this. This is quite loose in vehicle mode as well if you try to plug it in. But in room mode it's actually quite secure. And uh, that's pretty much it. I'm not going to complain about the size because, as I said, it's scale. He's small because he was small in the film. So, yeah. So, that's pretty much all I have to say about this guy. So. Do I recommend him? Honestly, if you can find him at a good price then well yeah i still think that this is a really good figure and of course jazz was quite uh, memorable probably just because he died in in the first film but still he was uh, one of the more memorable characters so i would say if you can find them for a good price or if you just get them in that autobot five pack then yeah go ahead because this is a really cool looking figure and honestly Seeing how we have this guy and G1 Jazz in Studio Series, part of me hopes that they do four Cybertron Jazz in the Game Boy Edition subline because he could go well with a certain other figure. So, this has been my review on Studio Series Jazz, and this is Charlie Young signing off.